Okay, so in the last video I left you off with Euler's discovery of the prime product formula. Okay, and I, I've rewritten it here. So he started with this infinite sum here, and he was able to find that it's equal to this infinite product, where we have to multiply an infinite amount of terms together. Okay, and here, down at the bottom, I've written it in another way. Uh, these two statements are equal, and with a little algebra you can get the bottom one. Okay, and it's just much easier to see the primes in the bottom one, and how important of a role they play in this equation. Okay, so why is it important that we have an equation with the prime numbers in it? Okay, and I've already mentioned that this is the first equation with primes, or at least the first equation with all prime numbers in it. Okay, and this is important because to this day, we still don't have any kind of formula that can predict what the next prime number will be. Essentially, we have to go through all the numbers and eliminate everything that's not prime. Okay, so let me give you a quick example with maybe the first 12 numbers. Okay, just to give you an idea of how it works. Okay, so 1's not prime, 2 is only divisible by itself and 1, so that's prime, 3 is prime, 4 is divisible by 2, so that's not prime, 5 is prime, 6 is divisible by 3 and 2, so that's not prime, 7 is prime, 8 is divisible by 2 and 4, 9 is divisible by 3, 10 is divisible by 5 and 2, 11 is prime, 12 is divisible by 6 and 2, and you just keep going. So any number that's divisible by anything other than itself is going to be eliminated here. Okay, and what you're left with are all the primes. But you can see that this process, when you get to really, really big numbers, like let's say 100 digit numbers, okay, with numbers this big, you need supercomputers to try and factor them. But even supercomputers might take days, months, or even years to find one factor of a number. Okay, and since this is an infinite process, okay, you can imagine that we're never going to find all the prime numbers, okay? But if we had a formula, then it would be easy to find the next prime number, okay? So that's why we think this equation is so important. We think it's the key to figuring out what's happening with prime numbers, okay? And something peculiar happens if you put in for s equals 3, okay? And I'll rewrite the equation, 1 plus 1 over 2 to the third plus 1 over 3 to the third plus 1 over 4 to the third and so on. Euler was not able to figure this out and to this day not one person has been able to solve this so we still have no idea what this number is. We know it's equal to about 1.20205 and it keeps going we don't really know the exact answer to this. Okay, Euler guessed that it is probably equal to pi cubed multiplied by some number, some constant, but we don't know what this number is. We can't figure it out. Okay, so like Euler, if you can solve this type of problem, you will become internationally famous within the mathematics world. Okay, so if we go back up to our timeline, so that was in 1737 that he published the prime product formula. So it was in 1738 that Euler damages his right eye. So this was due to fevers that he had as early as maybe 1735, and they just progressively got worse until he essentially loses sight in his right eye, which sounds like a pretty bad thing, but in reality it probably helped him and made him more productive. Okay, and we'll see that later in his life. But for now, it was a bit of a burden, and then in 1741, Euler moves to the Berlin Academy. Okay, so let's go to the map. So it was, he was born in Basel, Switzerland, then moved to St. Petersburg, Russia, and now he's moving to Berlin. And why does he move there? Well, the turmoil in Russia sort of reached a peak and it just became too intense for Euler to stay there and then it was Frederick the Great of Prussia who invites Euler to come to the Academy of Berlin or Berlin Academy and this was in 1741 
Okay, and it at first was great. Uh, Euler's given quite a bit of freedom, but eventually him and Frederick start to clash because Frederick considered Euler to be unsophisticated. Okay, Euler was very simple, and he had many conservative beliefs. Like I said earlier, he was a very devout Christian, and he continued that through his whole life. Many people considered Euler to be a very pious man. You hear that quite often about him. And Frederick was looking for somebody who was a bit more flamboyant, who liked to show off a bit more. Okay, and he also wanted someone who was more practical than Euler. Euler was not much of an engineer. Whenever Euler tried to build things, they didn't always work. He was a master of calculations. But when it came to building something, he wasn't always the expert you should turn to. Okay, and Frederick didn't really like that, and they had somewhat of a feud between them. Okay, and it gradually got worse and worse, but he did stay there for quite a few years. Okay, it wasn't until 1776 that he goes back to Russia, but we'll come back to that. And during his stay at the Berlin Academy, he accomplished great amounts of work. Okay, and it was in 1748 that he accomplished one of his biggest works yet. Okay, and that was essentially the introduction to the analysis of the infinite. Okay, and we've actually kind of worked on some of that with the Basel problem and the prime product formula. You can say that both of those were analyzing the infinite. Okay, and essentially people compare this book to the elements of Euclid. Elements of Euclid. Okay, Euclid wrote this book back in 300 BC. Okay, and what it did was clean up all of the prior work before it into a very nice, logical, concise manner. Okay, it made it much easier to read and to prove things. Okay, and this was the definitive guide on geometry since he wrote it, and basically still is today. Okay, and Euler was able to do the same thing for analyzing the infinite. Okay, so this textbook was able to make all other textbooks on the subject completely obsolete. So now everyone turned to Euler as the guide on how to deal with the infinite.